Hello everybody, how's it going? Lonnie Eagleton here. Welcome to the hotel room. I am currently on tour in Europe, playing festivals, playing in Vienna tomorrow, and we got a day off here in Vienna today. I just got back from visiting Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's old apartment. Yeah, that's right. It is a, It is now a basically a museum that you can walk through. It's like a vacant apartment with like a few displays on the walls. You can just walk through it, see where he lived, see where he lived out his final days, and just kind of outside of it walk the streets that he walked every day. Pretty cool opportunity. So, you know, when I found out we were coming to Vienna, I was like, we got to do this. And uh, it was pretty amazing. So today we're going to just discuss how good this man was at music, kind of t touch on his legacy and shine some light on that. So yeah, welcome to the video. Uh, first off, uh, I got a little bit of footage of the apartment itself. You weren't technically allowed to film in there, but I managed to sneak a little bit of iPhone footage. So did the best I could. Uh, let me show you a bit of what the apartment looked like. Pretty cool stuff, hey? I mean, you know, the videos probably didn't do it justice, but you could really get chills going there. I would highly recommend going to Vienna just to check that out, honestly, and, and everything else that the city has to offer. But yeah, just being in that apartment, it was like, wow, this is where this man, you know, lived. It's amazing. This is the door that he opened to get home every day that he lived here. Yeah, I, I don't know, I really like stuff like that. Uh, anyway, so just gonna read a bit about him. Um, just to kind of set the tone here. So Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was born January 27th, 1756, which was 250 years ago now, basically. And he died December 5th, 1791. So he was only 35 when he died, which is quite tragic. Um, only five years older than I am now, so that's pretty crazy to think about. Uh, anyways, he was a prolific and influential composer of the classical period. Despite his short life, his rapid pace of composition resulted in more than 800 works of uh, virtually every genre of his time. So he was basically like a workaholic, you know. It was common that he would be up until past midnight working by candlelight, you know, and then up early the next day. And he was a prolific partier, too, supposedly. He really liked to have a good time. So he was essentially the rock star of his day, uh, if you want to think of it that way. Many of these compositions are acknowledged as pinnacles of the symphonic, chamber, operatic, and choral repertoire. Mozart is among the greatest composers in the history of Western music, with music admired for its melodic beauty, its formal elegance, and its richness of harmony and texture. Yeah, everything he writes is beautiful, gorgeous, super pretty is the way to describe it. Of course, his biggest song, uh, his biggest hit, as they say, the one that most people know, is... Uh, is a great melody, of course. My favorite song, or piece of his, I should say, is uh, Requiem Mass. Now, a little context, if you're unfamiliar with what a Requiem Mass is, it is essentially a Catholic Mass, a service written for the dead. 
uh, to honor the dead, to represent the dead. That's what a Requiem Mass is. So Mozart was commissioned to write a, a Requiem Mass. And while he was writing it, he actually started dying himself. Uh, he fell very ill during his compositions and started dying while he was writing it. So essentially he was writing a Requiem Mass, a Mass for the Dead, for himself. So it's quite tragic and you can actually really hear it in the lyrics, the reflection of it. There's a, there's a lyric that goes, Salva me, which means save me in English. And uh, yeah, I mean, just knowing that he was writing that about himself, about his own death, really puts things into perspective and it really makes you feel something upon listening, uh, knowing the context of that. So I highly recommend checking it out. You know, if you haven't really been introduced to classical music that much yet, check out Mozart's Requiem Mass and I promise you, you'll feel something. Um, that was actually my first introduction to Mozart was the Requiem Mass. And when I was in music college in the early 2010s, uh, we actually sang it when I was in a choral class. I sang tenor, we sang the whole mass. And honestly, every rehearsal we did, I would feel something, you know, I would feel like, wow, this is some heavy music here. And yeah, it really is. So anyways, Mozart did pass away while writing it, unfortunately, while writing the piece. And his student actually, Sussmeyer, another composer, completed the mass on Mozart's behalf, based on, you know, his best guess of what Mozart would write to fill in those gaps. So that's kind of interesting. Anyways, it's a fantastic piece of music. Definitely check out Mozart's Requiem Mass. You really got to be in the mood for it, though. You know, you really got to be willing to let the music transport you. Like, don't just put it on in the gym or something casually like that. You got to sit down and listen and let the music transport you. You really got to be in that kind of mood for it. So another fun fact about Mozart, if you're unfamiliar, or it's always fun to reminisce, is he was essentially a child prodigy from the time he was born. So uh, he started playing violin at a very early age, and word got out that he was actually like pretty freaking good right off the bat. And his father would actually take him around to various people who would pay to watch him play. Uh, sometimes in front of uh, royalty, even. And Mozart would be, you know, I I don't know the exact age. I think he was around five or six years old, even, or something. I could be wrong on that. Let me know if I'm wrong. But yeah, he was very young. And from what I heard, he would actually go around and play the violin virtuosically, uh, blindfolded as well, like in front of rich people who would pay um, him and his father to come around and play for them. So kind of like a circus act, essentially, which is an interesting way to begin your music career. Um, but yeah, you know, got to make that money however you can, I guess. Uh, anyways, he eventually developed into the wonderful composer that he turned into. But yeah, it's funny to hear about that bizarre beginning about where he got his foot in the door in terms of uh, performances. So anyways, one of the greatest composers of all time, my personal favorite composer, uh, if I had to choose, personally. The guy just knew what sounded good. He knew how to write it down. Simple as that. And he did it better than anybody else. In my opinion. Of course, music is all subjective, but that's how I feel, anyways. So, yeah, just my thoughts as I returned today from visiting his old apartment. Such a cool place. Um, funny enough, we also went to Beethoven's old apartment today, too. Beethoven also lived his final days here in Vienna, Austria, and his apartment is not too far from Mozart. So we went to check that out as well, which was very cool. That's another story for another day. But yeah, today we're reflecting on Mozart, uh, one of the greatest of all time. So thanks for checking it out. Be sure to go check out the Requiem Mass again, or for the first time if you haven't yet. Just put it on start to finish. You gotta be in the right mood though, you know? You gotta be prepared. You gotta be in one of those moods where you're gonna accept the fact that the music is gonna bring you somewhere. You're gonna get transported, you know? Um, I highly recommend it. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. Today, uh, we were playing at Nova Rock Festival here in Vienna tomorrow. Gonna be a good show, gonna be a good one. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more videos on the channel. I'm Lon Eagle 10, we'll see you soon.